Hello and welcome. It's May, so that means it's time to review our Tesla Model S ownership experience. I've been making videos every year cataloging how well the car has worked for us. Now, we purchased our 2015 Model S 85D used directly from Tesla three years ago. And so it came with a two-year warranty. Uh, it, we had 63,000 miles on the odometer when we bought it. And, and if it had been less than 60,000 miles, it would have had a four-year bumper to bumper warranty. But uh, we got it anyway. And, and it's been fine. Uh, we used the warranty a number of times on those first two years. And I made YouTube videos going all of, over all of the ownership and the, the maintenance that has been needed on the car. So I'll put a playlist here, card here that you can go watch those videos if you are interested. I make these videos about our Tesla so that I can put information out there in the world about these vehicles and how well they perform or don't perform because there's a lot of people that don't have any experience with electric cars in general. So I want to share my experiences to you know, help others to decide whether or not they want to make the transition to electric or not themselves. So now today's video is our third year. And so the last year has been without having warranty on the car. And so I'm now going to go through our spreadsheet and show you what I've done to the car in this last year or what, you know, maybe problems it has had. And so and just keep in mind, we have a family of six now. So we, we had uh, James was born in the last six months. And so now our Model S, we have to use the two rear facing seats whenever we drive anywhere. We actually have our two oldest uh, children that sit in those rear facing seats. And then we have our two youngest that sit in the middle bench, just like where they were before. And then Jessica and I sit in the front, or sometimes one of us will sit in the middle row so that we can help the younger kids, especially James. And we especially do that when we're on road trips. In any case, let's jump into the spreadsheet and I'll show you the maintenance that the car has needed in the last year. This is the spreadsheet that I use to keep track of all of the maintenance on our Tesla. And all of these rows up here are from the uh, previous two years of ownership. So if we drop down here to row 29, this is the last row from the video that I did last year. And so from row 30 down here through row 36, these are all of the things that have happened in the last year. Now, at the end of the last video, I mentioned that the door handle had just barely stopped working right when I was making the video. And luckily Tesla agreed to go ahead and replace it under warranty. Uh, otherwise that would have cost us about uh, $378. You can see here that we had 100,334 miles on the car and the warranty expired right at 100,000 miles. And that had happened right around the same time as the time would have expired the warranty anyway, because May 9th at uh, the end of the day would have been when the warranty expired as well. In any case, they came and did that and they had the car torn apart. And not that the, the air filter is hard to replace, but there's a plastic cover you have to take off to get to it. And I went ahead and took advantage of the opportunity and just slipped in a new air filter while the technician was working on the door handle. And so that cost me about $20 on Amazon and I replaced that myself. So then the next thing that happened is the, the tires were getting close to the end of their life. And we were about to go on a long road trip to Mount Rushmore, which I've yet to make videos about on my channel, but I intend to. And so because they were getting down to 3.30 seconds and 4.30 seconds, depending on where in the tire was being measured, I decided to just go ahead and replace the tires. I normally probably would have wait, waited just a little bit longer here in Utah in the desert in the summer. The tread is not quite as imperative as it is in really rainy climates. And we weren't just about to head into the snow and winter season. Now, if we look up here on row 12, these are the tires that I had uh, that I was replacing. And so those ended up getting 24,372 miles on them. And this is what they cost at that time. And so if I come back down here, you can see that they refunded me $415.80 due to the mileage warranty of the previous tires. And so the, the price of these tires ended up being $763.21 with that subtracted. That was on May 29th, just a couple of weeks after the door handle had been replaced. And then we went on our road trip. And you can see jumping forward to August now, we went in for a tire rotation. And that was free as part of the discount tire uh, agreement. You know, when you buy new tires through them, then the rotations are free. And this was the measurement of those tires, eight uh, 30 seconds. So they'd lost uh, two 30 seconds uh, in the time that uh, we had had them on the car. Now, then we had the passenger uh, tire replaced. This was due to a nail that uh, we picked up. And that's the first time that's ever happened to me. I, I hear it happens to a lot of Tesla owners, but personally, I had never had a nail in a tire, but we went ahead and had to have that tire replaced. And so 
I decided not to renew the uh, roadside hazard because to me, uh, these tires, they get worn out so quickly. I don't have them on the tire, uh, on the car for terribly long, usually like a year or maybe a year and a half. And I'm, I like to self-insure where it makes sense. And I don't just like paying $32 multiplied by four every year or two, just in case a tire gets replaced, which is ironic because this is literally where that ended up happening and it didn't cost me much to get the tire replaced. But this has never happened to me in my many years of driving. So I'm not too worried about it. One line item that I totally forgot to add in here was the 12 volt battery replacement, which I have actually made a YouTube video about already, which I will link above so that you can go watch that if you are interested in more details about how this went. Uh, but the Tesla started to indicate that it needed the 12 volt battery replaced. And so I looked into this uh, lithium ion replacement option and, and ended up doing that in November of uh, 2021. Actually, this right here is wrong. <laughs> So at that point, the car had 108, almost 109,000 miles on it. And I uh, got that installed. And if you are interested in the same battery for your own Tesla, just use the code Dunster and that will give you 5% off any Omni battery. So then the next thing was the MCU. Uh, we got a firmware update a notification and I went ahead and tried to install it just like I normally do. And it said that there was an error and that it wouldn't install. And I tried repeatedly and it just wouldn't install. So I contacted Tesla through the app and they said, you'll need to bring this in and we'll try reformatting it uh, in person. They had tried to do it over the internet, uh, like reformatting the MCU and they just couldn't do it. So I took it in and they attempted to reformat the MCU so that they could then get the firmware update to install and it failed. So they basically said, yeah, you're gonna have to just replace your whole MCU. The computer's getting too old and there's corruption on the storage medium. They had already replaced the daughter board in the past, and I don't claim to know all the technicalities of what was going on here exactly, but they're claiming the MCU needs to be replaced. And that would cost us potentially around $1,500 from what I hear to go to the newer um, MCU. We're still on the first gen MCU and it would be going to the second generation. Well, we haven't decided to do that because the car still functions just fine. It just can't get firmware updates. So we're kind of stuck now on this older firmware from 2020. And we're generally okay with that at this point in time. We may end up doing that though. Uh, it kind of depends on if something else stops working on the car. And then the last thing we have here to report is the tires uh, we had rotated in April of this year in 2022, that, that was free. And you can see here that when the tires were rotated, the car had 111,733 miles on it. And then also I did purchase some new wiper blades and I just haven't installed them yet, but I just threw that on there just kind of showed that's another thing that's maintenance that I haven't had to do yet, but I went ahead and bought the parts for when I need them. All right, let's switch over to Teslify and I'll go over the battery degradation report in here. This is the home screen of Teslify and just as an aside, you can see here that I'm currently charging the car and you can see here it says average of seven amps. And this is actually charging off of our travel trailer right now and the electrical system that I installed in the travel trailer. Uh, I'll be doing another video about that later and showing the nuances and details of how I do that. Uh, but I just slowly charge it all day long during the sunny days. And we actually have been largely maintaining the charge on the car uh, for several weeks now. In fact, since March and it's now in May and we've only had to charge off the house a couple of times. This is the monitoring portal of the system in the RV. And so this is showing the 1,637 watts that is being pulled by the Tesla to charge that. And then right now from the solar, we're getting 1882 watts. So right now the battery is just barely starting to idle where there's not much going in or out of it. It's technically getting charged by 18 watts right now. And then down here is a graph showing the solar is the yellow and the consumption is the red. So I didn't have the car plugged in initially this morning and then I did plug it in and that's what the charging has looked like. If we look at yesterday, which was not a perfectly sunny day, you can kind of see a general graph. And like I said, I'll be getting into this in more detail in a future video. So if you're interested in getting notified when I upload that video, subscribe and change the bell notification all to make sure you get notified when I upload that video. And as you can see over here, the exact mileage on our car at this very moment is 117,637.32 miles. Let's go over here to the uh, charges and then the battery report. So this is showing all of the data that I have. I started using this in late 2019, and that's this here. And then the green line on here is the fleet average range. And then the, the blue line is my battery's range. You can see that my range is 
well, fundamentally less. Like when my car was brand new, uh, right here, this line of 270, that's what my car came with brand new. So when they say fleet, I, I guess they're comparing it to other models or something and not my specific you know, 85D model. In general though, if you look at my trend, you can see when I first got the car, we were up here in the 260 miles range area. And actually when we first, first got the car and I don't have it in Teslify here, we were at 262 miles of rated range. Now let's, let's important to clarify what rated range means. Rated, it's just kind of what they determine is the average what you, they expect you to get on this, with, with this car of how many watt hours per mile. But the reality is, is if you're city driving, you'll get higher. And if you are just constantly driving on the highway at a high rate of speed, you'll actually get lower range. And so this is just the rated range. If you look at this trend line, you can see that it's basically slowly trending down, which is to be expected. There's some battery degradation just from age and use of the battery. So jumping forward all the way here to where we are right now, we are sitting at a 251 miles of rated range. And recently I fully charged the car and it got to 100% and I took a picture here and you can see that it indicates in the car 251 miles of range as well. So Teslify is matching that well. And, and so if we move down here, it's showing some percent loss based on various ranges. I put in the custom range here because that's what our range was when it was new. And so with 270 miles of rated range and our current range now at 251, we're experiencing a 6.92% loss of the um, energy storage capacity of our battery pack. And what that translates to on road trips, we typically can go 200 miles. When that of course leaves some buffer uh, at the bottom of the battery to make sure we don't you know, end up on the side of the road. But when we're traveling, say 80 miles an hour on the freeway for the entire range of the battery, we're getting closer to 85% efficiency and depending on wind, it could be less or more. And so we, we generally just expect to be able to go at least 200 miles on a full charge, but with a little bit of buffer at the end. The rest of this is just included data points, which is showing each time we've charged the car, what percentage we charged it to and what the battery range was when it, we stopped charging and then all of these other columns of information. And I'll just kind of scroll down this so that you can kind of see what, what those numbers look like, but it really is just the high levels what I'm, I'm shooting for right now. This right here is showing the total charge counts. So how many times we have charged it to what percentage. And you can see most of the times we've stopped it at 80% and I did have it going to 90% a number of times and then a bunch of in-between in percentages as well. And it's not that I've set it to stop at this percentage, but a lot of times that's just where it got to when we unplugged it to leave to go somewhere. And so that's the number that it logged in this entry. Something worth mentioning about the battery as well is we went on a 4,500 mile road trip recently out to the Midwest of the United States. And multiple times the battery actually did get up to 130 kilowatt charge rate. This particular picture shows it stopping at 128, but it did get to 130 briefly. The charge curve, it peaks very briefly at that high charge rate and then it fairly quickly dips down to closer to 100 kilowatts and then it slowly marches down and then hovers in the 70 kilowatt range for quite a while and then it marches down still further. So the car is definitely charging more slowly now than it was when we first got it. And I'm talking about supercharging here, but it's not terrible. Like we're talking in a big normal charge session, it's adding five to 10 minutes, depending on you know how full we're trying to fill the battery. And with my kids running around, having fun and stretching their legs, it hasn't been a big deal still, but it is taking longer to go on road trips and go trend. We can't go as many miles in a day because we're spending a little bit more time charging at each charge stop. Another reason why slower charge speeds doesn't bother me at all is because we have an older Tesla that still has the grandfathered in free unlimited supercharging for the life of the vehicle. So yeah, we have a slower charge speed, but we don't have to pay to get around. So we went on this whole 4,500 mile trip completely for free. In my next video, I'm going to be able to show a whole bunch of time lapse because uh, I time lapsed the entire thing. And so you'll be able to get a feel for you know, how long this has been taking for charging while we're on a road trip. I hope this has been helpful seeing how well the car has worked for us uh, over this last year as well as all the years prior. If you're interested in more videos about how well the car has worked for our family, then check out my other videos on my channel. And I've got several that I've made about road trips that we have uh, experienced in our Tesla. And if you're interested in seeing the future videos that I'll be making, feel free to subscribe to my channel and you'll get notified when those post. And with that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Hey James. You. Do you like chickens? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Get off of me, chick.
get off of me!